Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. I'm excited to continue our conversation with Dr. Jason Olson. He's the author of The Burning Book, and he talks about uh, his memoir that he talks about joining the LDS Church with a background in Judaism. So it's going to be a great conversation. We're going to talk about his continuing to navigate LDS and Jewish dating life, so that'll be fun. We'll also talk about uh, Israeli-Palestinian relations, his return to BYU, and also talk about his religious studies at BYU. So you won't want to miss this conversation. And remember to sign up um, right away because I'm going to be having the drawing soon. So you don't want to miss this book, The Burning Book. So back to our conversation. So so what made you come back to America then? Uh, so, yeah, my... Uh my my grandmother uh, on my on the Jewish side of my family had passed away a year a year before I went to Israel, and so my my grandfather um, and I, I already mentioned him about how he served in World War II and everything and <coughs> um, and how close I was to him. He uh, he was a widower, and he had a lot of his savings that he was trying to to, to shed, um, and so he was going to buy the whole family a uh, a cruise to uh Cozumel, Mexico. And so of course, you know, I, I had returned from my mission and so I wasn't tied up like that. And so my family was just, "Hey, are you going to come back, you know? Papa Al wants to take the whole family on a on a cruise to you know, it's his dream to get, you know, to get the whole family on a cruise and and I was really close to him, and I knew, you know, obviously he's grieving, and we all miss uh, our Grandma Gilda. And so, I, I, you know, those heartstrings were just getting tugged, really, you know, and, um, and, and I felt, well, you know, I've got this dream to be in Israel, but, you know, I don't know how, how long I'm going to have my, my grandfather, so I really want to spend time with him and see the rest of my family. So, so I just decided um, I'd go back and um, spend time with, with my side of the family. And I, I, you know, I miss them and I kind of been running away from home for so long. So, so that was the immediate impetus. Um, and um, yeah, and it was also difficult, I think, as, uh, as being a, a committed member of the church, um, you know, I really wanted to marry in the temple, you know, you know, and and in the Latter-day Saint temple, right? I guess you could say, you know, there's also the Jewish temple and, you know, anyway. um, What's the closest LDS temple to Israel? It was uh, Switzerland. Oh, wow. Pretty, pretty far. I guess now it it could, it'd be Dubai. Um, Once, once Dubai is up. Oh, really? Yeah, if you could, you could go to Dubai. In a Muslim country. In a Muslim country, which they wow. have the Abraham Accords, right? You could, you could literally use the Abraham Accords, and you could fly from Israel to Dubai. And if you're a Latter Day Saint living in Israel, you could, you could do a direct flight to Dubai, and you could go to the temple there. It's kind of wow. kind of interesting. wasn't available back then, but <clears throat> um, yeah, and um, yeah, it's. So, so, I mean, if, if you're if you're curious about that, but that that was the. That was also a big factor because um, there was a I, I did I had dated a Latter Day Saint girl in uh, in Israel um, and you know and you know it gotten I guess a little little serious but uh, you know and talked about um, you know talked about you know hey you know whenever whenever you get married one day you know where do you want to get married <laughs> you know what I mean? just kind of a Kind of a trying to be unserious about it, <laughs> and you know, and I was like, well, you know, um, you know, I, I really want to get married in a temple, and um, you know, that's I'm, I'm very committed to that. You know, I wanna, I wanna make the covenants in, in the temple. I've been endowed. You know, I'm a return missionary, and I wanna that that be the next step. And uh, and she was. Um, she was like, "Oh, what? You know, why is it, why is it such a big deal for Mormons to get married in the temple?" And I was like, "It's just a very..." I'm like, "You're a Mormon, you know." 
<laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Why are you even asking the question? <laughs> yeah, and I just that that really um so that kind of like really bothered me and I was I was just I I just it like kind of made me sick to my stomach cuz um and then not not sick sick about her she, a wonderful she's a wonderful person but I just kind of I just kind of realized um you know it, it just my priorities kind of kind of shifted and or I mean well my I think my priorities were always the same but I I kind of it kind of made me wake up to what were my priorities here like mm-hmm. I I I do feel like it's a it's a mitzvah it's a commandment to be in the land of Israel as a member of the tribe of Judah, right? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there's literally a Doctrine and Covenants verse that says, you know, let Judah flee unto Jerusalem. And that's, that's basically, a, it's basically a commandment, you know, let Judah flee unto Jerusalem. Okay, yes, sir, Lord, <laughs> you know, um, and that's kind of my military side, but <clears throat> but um, but then you know, it's also a commandment as a Latter Day Saint and the covenants that I had made as Latter Day Saint. You know, I I'd been baptized, I had been endowed, so I felt I also had these covenants to marry in the temple. So um, I I, I want I, I took that seriously. Um, so a, yeah, after some prayer and soul searching, I I tried to to gently, um, you know, kind of break up. And so, um, but then, you know, there's just not a lot of Latter-day Saints in, in Israel, as you can imagine, yeah. um, that are there permanently. So, uh, but I, did, I did, yeah, I mean, interest, a kind of interesting tangent, but I, I had these two Jewish Latter-day Saint, Jewish, Jewish Mormon, Jewish Latter-day Saint um, brothers, and, I, I, and I, I met them both in Provo, and they're uh, Dave and Aaron. And, um, and I met both of them in different circumstances. If, if you're curious, it's, it's in the book, but, um, we, the three of us had made this, this pact that we were going to, that we were going to leave Provo and, and move to Israel permanently. (laughs) So we were like, it was like our little Jewish Mormon fraternity. So you'd done your end of the bargain. (laughs) Well, and, and I also had brought Dave. Uh, Dave with me as well. It's a totally okay. different Dave, um, and uh, and well, Dave was also a uh, uh, a Marine, and he had uh, a U.S. Marine served two tours of combat in Iraq. Um, so he was co- he was going to Israel. I mean, he had similar feelings about Zionism, but he also wa- wanted to heal in a way from the war. <laughs> which is interesting to go to to Israel, which is, you know, constantly a war as well. <laughs> but he but he wanted to, you know he wanted to go to Jerusalem and he he felt like Jerusalem could heal him, you know, mm. and if he could study the Torah and um, so I was very supportive. Um, and then and we had Aaron who um, he'd experienced a lot of anti semitism on his mission in Spain. I mean, like like neo Nazi anti semitism from even from some of his companions and also mm-hmm. members of the church. So, um, yeah, a lot of Spanish, I guess, Spaniard Latter-day Saints had, you know, just had a lot of those anti-Semitic traditions. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So he, that really brought his, like, Jewish identity, you know, out of the, out of the soil. And so he wanted to go to Israel as, as well. So we all were very religious guys but very zionist guys and and i yeah so anyway there was a moment where the three of us were all together and we you know we had dinner together and i i was kind of sad and you know hey how how's how's it going everybody called me yosh which is like uh because my my hebrew name is yehoshua joshua you know yehoshua jason obviously is a greek name um because i you know i was I was Hellenized, um, <laughs> but everybody called me Yosh for short, you know. Um, so Yosh, you know, how, how how's it going with that that uh, Mormon girl? I said, oh, I you know, I told him the story and we broke up, and I was sad. And and then uh, Aaron, 
was thinking, you know, he was kind of thinking about returning to Judaism and becoming an Orthodox Jew because he just, I think his mission was so traumatic um, and he just felt like, you know, um, there was this underlying anti-Semitism uh, maybe in the, in the church or in some, member, some members of the church that he couldn't shake. And so, uh, and, and, um, so he, said, he said, why don't you date an Orthodox, uh, an Orthodox girl? And I was like, oh, I mean, like, what, what, what should I, you know, what am I supposed to do? And um, so anyway, uh, yeah, we, we have a, an interesting scene where, where I had met like an Orthodox Jewish girl on a bus and she, you know, she had clearly shown some interest and, and then I had the, you know, this moment of dilemma. Should I, should I ask her out or, you know, cause if I go down that road, you know, then what about the, you know, what about the temple? You know, because for me it was Latter Day Saint Temple. It will be Temple Beth Shalom or something instead. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, so I, yeah. So I, I anyway. So that's so that's kind of I made up my mind, and I just no, I can't I can't go down that road. Um, despite how you know covenant keeping these Jewish people are, and you know they're they're keeping their covenant, and I respect that and support them. But I, I felt what God had obligated me was to pursue what I, you know, what I call the Cumorah Covenant, right? Mm-hmm. You've got the Sinai Covenant, and you've got the Cumorah Covenant. And uh, to me, they're both, they're both true. They both lead you to God. And, um, and I, you know, I was surrounded by Jewish people who were, committed to the Sinai covenant, but I had, through my story that, that, you, that you know now, uh, I had committed myself to the, to the Hill Cumorah um, and, uh, and to the covenant that you know, came, came through the Book of Mormon and, and the Restoration. <clears throat> so, so that was you know, that, the kind of the underlying spiritual and religious tectonics. Um, and so I... I, I I did go back to the states and I um, and I went on the cruise and with Papa Al and and was happy to reunite with my family. I still wanted to go back to Israel, um, but I I I wanted you know to find the right girl to marry in the, in the temple for time and all eternity. You know, and that, I mean that's you know that's the goal of a lot of return missionaries, right? <laughs> I mean, so I'm still. Still a Zionist and a Jew, but also now I'm also a return missionary, and and I you know and um, and I you know I want to have a family, and 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 at the time you know I want to raise my children as Latter Day Saints, but I, and, and you know it's it's it gets complicated, right? Right. <laughs> and um, uh, but I I enrolled in Arizona State University actually, so I kind of I didn't want to go back to BYU. I, I felt felt kind of strange about that, um, and because uh, I, I my goal was to go back to Israel, so I I enrolled in Arizona State University's aerospace engineering program, and because uh, I, I wanted to literally be a rocket scientist, and uh, when I was in Israel, I was really concerned about the Iranian and Hamas and Hezbollah. Uh, rocket attacks, um, which is still still an issue to this day uh, uh, for those who watch the news, um, you know, because I, you know, I, I I knew the people there and people that had to go into bomb shelters and, you know, I mean, it's interesting because uh, I'm in Korea and you know North Korea sends sends missiles right, um, mm-hmm. but they they always shoot their missiles into the sea, right. Right and, and and there's a lot of panic, right? Um, but they're shooting their missiles into the sea. But Hamas and Hezbollah, you know, they they fire their missiles right into your your grocery store, or your kindergarten, or your playground. You know what I mean? I mean, you can. So I mean, just to take a second back and think about how you know Israeli people feel when. 
the, the rockets are pointed at their civilians. Right. Um, and, uh, and how, you know, how you want to respond. And, you know, it's, I mean, uh, you know, we just had a, you know, a balloon and, and we, you know, fired a missile, <laughs> shoot down a balloon. Um, you know, you can imagine how, so anyway, just take a moment and just think about how Jewish people are human beings. Um, you know, they're not demons that you could just slaughter without uh, conscience. Right. I mean, they're, you know, that's, that's how you, you get the Holocaust. Um, but they're human beings who want to just live their lives in peace and dignity in their own homeland. And uh, if you're getting, getting rockets on your, on, your, uh, on your house and on your grocery store, you're, you're going to respond. Right. So um, it's just very basic uh, issue of humanity. Not to, not to say, uh, from my point of view, you know, the, the Palestinians are also hu- equally human beings to Jews. Mm-hmm. And I accept that and I acknowledge that and uh, trying to treat Palestinians with, with dignity um, as, as children of God, as, as people created in the image of God. And, you know, I, when I got into the country, I, I worked for Palestinian, you know, economic equality. So, I mean, that's, that's how I kind of thought about that as a Jew, as a Latter-day Saint. But I am insistent that Jews are also human beings. That's the problem. That's, that's, the, that's one of the hardest things going on in the world is, uh, you know, um, is, 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 is whether you accept Jews as human beings. Um, I, I do think a lot of Israelis could do a, better, a lot better job in, in seeing the humanity in Palestinians. But, um, but that's kind of, in a nutshell, how I, how I view those things. And, yeah. um, but in any case, that was, uh, yeah, I wanted to do aerospace engineering and, and work on the you know, missile defense, which is an uh, you know, interesting, uh, interesting kind of, kind of path. But um, eventually I, I, I returned to, to BYU. <laughs> so... I, uh, my, my buddy Dave Thaxton, the guy who, who gave me a copy of the Book of Mormon all those years ago, before, um, you know, he had gotten off his mission and he was back at BYU and living in the, the Y-View apartments and, uh, and we were talking and oh, I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'm going to stay here, live at my parents' house and. You know, go to go to AS, Arizona State, um, be a rocket scientist, and and Dave's like, no, no, you gotta, you gotta come back to BYU, you know, like I need you here, man. Um, and yeah, he's you know, was was one of my best friends, so I um, he started kind of pulling at my uh, my heartstrings, <laughs> you know, and, and I was like, oh well, it's it's a ten ten hour drive. And, um, so it was like two weeks into the semester and I just, I'm praying about it, you know, should I just stay here at Arizona state? And it was a little awkward at Arizona state. I'll, I'll admit, um, it's a party school, I had be, right? <laughs> it's a party school and I, you know, I, I had gotten so religious, you know, as a Jew, I was really religious as a Latter-day Saint, I'm really religious and I, you know, I'm just, ah. I'll, I'll, I'll go back to BYU. And um, so I just got in my little green Chevy pickup and I just, just told my mom and dad, I'm going back to BYU. <laughs> you know? And I just started, just packed up, you know, a bag and just started driving back to, up to north to Provo and um, just trusting in the Lord that, you know, whatever he's got for me next I'll, I'll see what happens. And, uh, and I met up with Dave and, um, yeah, I met up with Dave. I, I lived in the same complex as, as Dave and, um, you know, I wanted to, cause I hadn't seen him for a long time, you know? Uh-huh. <clears throat> so it just, yeah, just kind of a decision based on your loyalty to your friends. My other buddies, um, Matt and Shay, they, they, uh, they were also there back at BYU, so you know the the band is bands all together, 
all these high school buddies. And uh, I start going to church. Um, and, and that's where I meet, meet my wife, Sarah. <laughs> you know, just a couple, couple weeks after, uh, after I, I go back to BYU. And, now, and we're, in the, we're those, in the same ward. One of those typical BYU engagements where it was like two weeks and you were married a month later. <laughs> it, not that quick, but but pretty quick. Yeah, I think we we got married in about um, six months after we we oh, met. Wow. That was pretty quick. Yeah, so it's real quick. Um, and you know, and I yeah, so I just uh, I came back and um, yeah, went, went to ward prayer and and I I was already late, you know, because the semester has already started and you know i just i was just all like out of sorts and you know ward prayer they asked the new people to introduce yourself i was one of the few new people because everybody else already knew each other and then i just told my story i just i just got back from israel and uh you know i told him you know a little about uh, my story and so i guess that was kind of kind of cool kind of exotic a different different kind of guy <laughs> so might might have might have helped me with my with my wife sarah um <laughs> yeah and her and her and her uh friend just came up and introduced themselves and oh welcome to our ward you know and i was like oh and i was like oh that that sarah girl's pretty cute and um and i was like oh i, I hopefully i can you know, ask her out eventually. And, um, you know, I was, and, uh, yeah, I just, I just liked her smile, I guess. Mm-hmm. And then, so in, in any case, there's a whole story to that. And, you know, she, uh, she turned me down the first two times I asked her out. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah. So there's, so, I mean, the, the third time I did what, you know, what the general authorities tell you not to do is, is to go, you know, go on a, a group date. <laughs> and so, but I, I just was so afraid of being rejected a third time. So I had my, my friend, uh, I think he was my roommate uh, in, the, in the apartments there. And I said, and he's like, oh, hey, there's, there's a hockey game tonight that I know about. BYU like, hockey? Oh, re- no, no, it wasn't BYU hockey. I think it was like intramural or... Maybe I, I can't remember what, what league it was, but anyway, I was like, oh, yeah, I really want to ask this girl Sarah out, but, you know, she turned me down the first two times I asked her out. So I was like, can we go over to her apartment and you will invite all of her and all her roommates to the hockey game? <laughs> and he was like, he was like, okay, I can do that. And so, so I went over there and, and I'm just... I turned to him and I think his name was Miguel and uh, and Miguel was like, "Hey, do you all want to come to the hockey game with us?" Uh, you know, I'm just inviting all the girls and they and they were like, "Yeah, sure." And then and Sarah was like, "Okay, I'll come." And um so that's how I I got her on our first date. <laughs> 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 but uh so, you know, I I had to do what I had to do. But finally when I could get her on a date, you know, I I realized she liked me and, you know, she rested her head on my shoulder and, you know, we ate ice cream together and, and, uh, and I, re- okay. All right. So she, she does actually. Uh, like ice me. cream has a special meaning at BYU that most people who didn't go there might not know. What, what's that? I, what, the, Have uh, you heard that? I never heard that. No, I mean, <laughs> maybe I did. I, maybe, maybe I forgot. Maybe this is an old thing. This might date me, but you know. Um, it's a kind of a euphemism for kissing. Like, did you have ice cream? Oh. Did you kiss? So. Oh. <laughs> did you have a, oh, I never heard. That. I guess I wasn't um, so maybe connected that's an to old all the, thing. the traditions. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I guess I'll have to have my listeners say, is that still a thing or is that like an 80s thing? Because it was I a thing know. in the 80s. I know that. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't we didn't have that, but uh, no, we literally <laughs> literally ate ice cream. And I still remember that, but uh, yeah. but that was it, you know. And 
That well, was, and you changed your major, right? You you didn't go into aerospace engineering. What did you go into at BYU? So yeah, I mean, I I went to I kept up with with Rabbi Singer's challenge to um, to read the Bible in Hebrew in my own language, and uh, and so I, I I went back to to ancient Near Eastern studies Hebrew Bible at BYU. So I just okay, I'll keep going with with Rabbi Singer's invitation. And, um, and ultimately, it was, it was a good choice because even though I wanted to do missile defense and I was worried about Iran and Hamas and Hezbollah and all that. So you're all about Middle East politics, it sounds like. And- oh, yeah, yeah, that's a whole nother. Um, but I did Hebrew Bible at BYU, so... I was I was literally reading the Bible in Hebrew and with with the best scholars that the church has. And um and I I still had a lot of questions, right? And this is what I tell po- folks is number 1 I absolutely loved going to institute when I was at um University of Arizona. Loved it. Have had amazing teachers um you know they taught me so much, um, but when you go, you know when you go to institute, you only have a, so many teachers, right? And, and they they have their their knowledge set and um, their specialists in in, in in some you know in whatever they're specialists in. But you know I had, as you can imagine, having grown up studying with the rabbis, you know I had so many so many questions that you know. One institute alone can't, couldn't handle, you know. So, um, so I felt once I was back at BYU, I felt like no, no, I really, I really need to be here because, I mean, I've got a million questions. I've got questions from my mission. I've got questions from being in Israel. Questions about my Jewish identity and, like I said, this this friction between Sinai Covenant and Kimura Covenant. You know, who who asks those questions? You know, <laughs> I mean. They're they're so out in left field, but um, to study at BYU with scholars who are, uh, you know, have d- dedicated their whole professional lives to understanding, you know, the Bible uh, in its context, and I mean, they, and that they, they get it. So when I'm, hey, I'm, what what obligations do I have under the Sinai Covenant, and what obligations do I have under the Kimura Covenant? These are questions that they're they've actually thought about, and they can you know they can actually help me sort through. And not that we're going to agree on everything, but at least I can I can ask my questions and learn, and and kind of fill out my uh, my belief system. And so that was really good. I mean, I could because I mean we the Hebrew Bible major is really small at BYU, very small. I mean, I think. We, I had like 20 people graduate with me, mm-hmm. you know, for, for, you know, people that, in my view, you know, build their entire lives off of, you know, Abrahamic covenants. I mean, that's, that's pretty sad, actually, that so few people would want to major in that. I mean, well, there's not a lot of money in it, is there? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there, there could, it's, uh. There, there should be a way to to get that expertise because um, anyway, I mean that's that that was kind of my uh, my surprise, but you know I was committed to it and I I wanted to reconcile my embrace of the Hebrew Bible. I mean that was the Torah mm-hmm. was my foundation, you know. I mean I never I never gave it up. I mean, I had a bar mitzvah that I talked about, you know, and I read the story of uh, Korach and his rebellion, you know, against Moses and getting swallowed in the earth and, you know, the the, the, the censers and the incense and um, the challenge. And, I um, mean, that was my foundation because just because I embraced the Book of Mormon that didn't mean that I had rejected the Torah. So, you know what I mean? You could see the complexity of course there's secular scholars who you know believe that the torah is just uh 
you know, the, the different um, theories. I, I don't need to get into all that, but there's a lot of theories about the construction of the five books of Moses and... Um, I think I do want to know, go on that, but maybe not yet. You're talking yeah. about the documentary hypothesis? There's documentary hypothesis and, you know, all the, the P and J and, and the different right. different source source criticism <clears throat> and um, I do want to get into that, know. but that, we'll, we'll, we'll okay. keep with your story. We can, um, we now. can, because you we can. you went on to get a PhD, right, at Brandeis University, yeah. which yeah. I've always heard of. I didn't realize that was a Jewish university in Boston, right? It, it is. Yes. Yeah. It's, so, uh, so why did you go to Brandeis? Tell us about that. Yeah. So, okay, we could, we could go there and then uh, and then come back around, but. Um, because I was a Zionist, right? I mean, so that's what I guess I'm describing. My commitment to the Torah, the five books of Moses, you know, that narrative um, and those commandments never never died. You know, I mean, it was always there. Um, that's, that's, I think, what is a, a bit unique about my story is I was a committed Jew who, you know, was called, commanded, uh, to go into the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Um, but I was, also, uh, I was also a Zionist, and that never shed itself either, <laughs> right? Um, uh, I mean, even in the synagogue that I was raised in, um, you know, one of the rabbis had, the rabbi who, bar mit, who, gave me my, who did my bar mitzvah, uh, I believe was a dual U.S. Israeli citizen married to a Israeli Sabra, you know, someone born in Israel. Um, the the head rabbi, uh, after he retired, he made Aliyah and moved to Israel, and you know, still lives there. I mean, so I had pretty much one of the most you know Zionist upbringing that you could have as a Jew, um, <clears throat> and so I. Uh, I wanted to not just study the Hebrew Bible when I was at uh, at BYU and, try, and you know, in the New Testament as well, and try to reconcile all these questions, which we could talk about more. But I also um, wanted to kind of see how see what BYU was teaching about um, Israel, modern day Israel. <clears throat> and there was only one class about that at at the Provo campus on the Israeli Palestinian conflict, and. As I've already mentioned, I was hyper concerned about Iranian and Hamas and Hezbollah missiles, right? I mean, because I was there and I met people who, you know, had to hide in bomb shelters, right? Um, and, and I've already expressed how I felt about it. And so I went in this class, and um, most of the students were uh, the modern Middle East studies Arabic major people. Um, and you know, obviously I'm, I'm very, I'm fascinated with the Middle East, you know, had lived in the Middle East, uh, on my own. Um, and, um, the narrative of the class was that, uh, Jewish people are, you know, they're these white European settler colonialists who, you know, had, they, they did experience a tragedy in, Europe in the Holocaust, and uh, they came to Palestine, but when they came to Palestine, they, they stole the land from the indigenous inhabitants. And so, the Pal- you know, Palestinian intifada, Palestinian war against, against Israel is, is, is justified because they're trying to, the, the Palestinian cause is trying to liberate and eject, you know, the, the colonialists from from their land. Um, for me, that was a completely false narrative. Um, number one, because you know, I I, I knew and, and and felt that um, Jewish people are uh, they're also indigenous to the land of Israel. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, now I, I've already explained, like I. I believe I believe in you know Palestinian human rights and and I would I, I would go on a limb to say that Palestinians are indigenous to the land as well, but um, you know if you if you if you know Jewish history, there are there are four 
holy cities, Jerusalem, uh, Tiberias, uh, Hebron, and Sfat. And those four uh, Jewish holy cities have been continuously inhabited by Jews. Um, so we have this myth uh, as, Christ, you know, as Christians in general, oh, the, you know, those, those evil Jews, they crucified Jesus and they, their punishment was they all got exiled from their land. It's not true. It's a myth. Archaeology, history can prove it. Um, there, we, we, you know, we could literally go dig into the earth and we could see that Jews have always lived in at least those four holy cities. Ever since the time of Jesus till today, Jews have always been in those cities. So they're indigenous. Um, even if you're a complete secular person, Jews have, have, they're indigenous. They've been an indigenous minority, but indigenous. So for that narrative to say, you know, that Jews just came in and, you know, they, they have no connection uh, is extremely offensive uh, and false. Where do you hear that? Because I don't hear that. that. Is that like an Arab talking point or something? Uh, that, that was this, the, you know, the Caucasian Utah uh, BYU really? professor point of view. Yes. Hmm. I'm not familiar um, with that, even though I'm from Utah. It, it, so. <laughs> it, 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 well, it's the, it's the paradigm of, it's the majority paradigm of modern academic Middle East studies. Hmm. So, and we could go into that more if you're interested. That's, that's more, you know, I, I, I guess I have expertise in both, but modern academic Middle East studies, that is the paradigm. Um, it gets worse because um, we started talking about Hamas rocket attacks. Right, and you, you, you already know how sensitive I feel about that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was there, you know, living with Latter Day Saints, you know, Latter Day Saints who are get, who have to hide in bomb shelters. Okay, um, mm -hmm. and then um, so the professor starts uh, talking about Hamas rocket attacks, and you know, from from that angle, you know, oh, Hamas is just trying to you know frighten the the Israelis so that. They leave so that they can liberate their land. It's justified, right? Because after all, you know, the Palestinians are indigenous, the Jews are not indigenous, and it's just the natives are trying to, to force out the colonialists. I, I obviously completely disagree with that, but then the professor asked for a raise of hands of how many students, after all this course narrative, believe that Hamas rocket attacks are justified. And almost all the students raise their hand. This is at BYU? This is at BYU. Really? Palestinian-Israeli conflict class. Senior, my senior year, 2009. Um, so I am just, I am getting livid, you know, an angry Jew, <laughs> you know? And I, I, I try to get out of my little chair you know my little desk I'm like fumbling around and I try to and I finally stand up and I, I'm angry and I I look at the professor and all my fellow classmates and I say I am disgusted with you how could you support terrorism and then I sat down <laughs> and everybody's like I have never experienced this at BYU <laughs> This is what contention feels like. <laughs> <laughs> but I was just, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, Jews are human beings, you know? They've always been in the land. You can't just use, you know, old anti-Semitic Christian teachings that, oh, well, the, the Jews rejected Christ, so they shouldn't even be there. So this reminds me really quick. I don't know if you saw my interview with uh, Dr. Trevin Hatch. Uh, he's a Jewish uh, scholar. Yes, I, I know. I know Trevin very well. Yeah, so, yeah. Love, uh, love, love the man. Is is he? Prob he would probably lean more towards your side. Would you say? I I don't want to speak for him. Um, but Trevin, you know, I what I appreciate and love about Trevin is he he respects Judaism. 
uh, for its own sake, right? Or he respects Judaism on its own terms. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Dr. Jason Olson, the author of The Burning Book. Now remember, tomorrow's the last day to enter into our contest for this book right here. So go to gospeltangents.com slash contest, and you might be the owner of this new book. So sign up today. In our next conversation, we're going to ask him about uh, his biblical studies. Does he believe in a global f- flood, for example? I think that because there's other flood traditions, you know, Enuma Elish, and um, there seems to be a human memory of floods in other civilizations, I, I believe that, um, yeah, that it was, it was a global, global flood, and... Um, and Noah started over. Thanks for listening to Gospel Tangents. If you'd like to support me, please subscribe at gospeltangents.com or on patreon.com slash gospeltangents, or you can watch entire videos at youtube.com slash gospeltangents. I really can't do this without your support. I'd love to do it full time, and I need a lot more people that are willing to, to help me out. So I'd really appreciate that. So. Thanks again for listening, and don't forget to check out some of our other videos.